Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 2 from Module 1, and it is Graphs of Quadratic Functions. Exploratory Challenge says to plot a graphical representation of change in elevation over time for the following graphing history, or story, I mean. It is a video of a man jumping from 36 feet above ground into one foot of water. Okay, um, yeah, not likely I would try that. Anyhow, I watched the video and absolutely amazed that this guy started out up here at about 36 feet, so right there, and he jumped off the platform and landed in a pool of water that was only one foot deep and it took about a second and a half I think yeah and watching the video it took about a second and a half so I would say that right about here is where he splashed okay All right. right here that is where he hit the pool in a second and a half so what would my graph be did he start out slower? Yes, he started from zero, he fell, and then it started. his speed started going faster and faster. Um, this is probably going to be pretty difficult for me to draw with this program. Try to do as best as I can. But it would be, yeah, I don't like that. Let's try again. So he's going out, and it's gradually coming down like this. Very difficult to draw on here. Um, so let's do some points instead. Um, there is an equation from physics, and it's the speed something falls on Earth. And in this case, gravity is pulling at a speed of 16 times time squared. So we're starting at 36 feet, and then 16 times the amount of time squared is being subtracted from our starting point. So at time 0, for instance, so if I plug this in, S of 0 would be 36 minus 16, and I'd substitute in a 0 for all of my t's, squared. So S of 0, in other words, where am I? What is my elevation in feet at time 0? would be 36 minus 16 times 0 squared. Well, 0 squared is 0. 0 times 16 is 0. So 36 minus 0 is 36. So at time 0, right here, we are up here at 36. Now at time 1 second, where are we? It would be 36 minus 16 times 1 squared. Well, 1 squared is 1. 16 times 1 is 16, and 36 minus 16 is 20. So at time 1, which is right here, 1 second, he has gotten all the way down to right here. So it took 1 second to go from 36 to 20. Okay. So at 1.5 squared is 2.25 times 16 so let me just show you that. So at the time, 1.5, that'd be 36 minus 16 times 1.5 squared. So S of 1.5 would equal 36 minus 16 times 2.25, 1.5 squared. So S of 1.5 equals 36 minus and then I multiply this. Let's just save some time here. Hey Siri, what's 16 times 2.25? 16 times 2.25 is 36. Okay, so 16 times that is 36. Well, lo and behold, 36 minus 36 is 0. So at a minute and a half, he is on the ground. Okay, so that holds true for this equation. So we can pick points in between to get even more accurate. So I could change this to a half a second. So 0.5, so I, I, let's just do this quickly right here, save some time. So at a half a second, let's just erase all this 
and do another one. Okay, so let's change colors. So S of 0 0.5 would be 36 minus 16 times 0 0.5 quantity squared. So S of 0 0.5 would be 36 minus, well, 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 is 0 0.25, or a quarter. Well, I know a quarter of 16 is 4. And so S of 0 0.5 would be 36 minus 4, or 32. Okay, so that means that at one half second, he is still up here around 32, right here. So he jumps off, and it's coming down like this, and kerplunk, splash. Okay, so there's the graph of the man jumping off of a platform into a one-foot pool over time. Okay, so here's example two. The table below gives the area of a square with sides of whole number lengths. So here's sides 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. It says to have students plot the points in the table on a graph and draw the curve that goes through the points. On the same graph, reflect the curve across the y-axis. The graph is an example of a graph of a quadratic function. So what they're talking about is they have these squares. Here's a square here with area 0 length zero, width zero, aka a point. Here is the area of a square of side lengths one. So that would be one, and this is one. And then we have area side length two, side length two by two, which would be an area of four. This is an area of one. And then side lengths three. So if this square is three by three, then the area is nine. And then finally, a four by four square that has an area of 16. So what they want us to do is graph so the sides as x and the area as y. So we're going to do that in GeoGebra. So here it is. And I'm going to input these points, and I'm just going to show you how they're going to graph. So I'm using the GeoGebra website. If you're not used to this or have never heard of this, it's a great website for an online graphing calculator. So I can input a point, and I can choose a coordinate of the point 0, comma, 0. So side length 0, comma, area 0, and hit return and it will plot a point at 0, 0. And then if I plot the point uh, 1, 1, let's see, it's not, there they are. OK, I was just covering it up. So there's 0, 0. There's the point 1, 1. So now if I input the point 3, or 2 comma 4, 2 comma 4, plotting that point is right here, over 2 up 4, and then another point 3 comma 9, so then I plot 3 comma 9, and plot that, that means go right 3 up 9, and then finally, the last point 4 comma 16, so ordered pair 4 comma 16 and hit return and now that I've done that I can move this graph around and change the zoom on it okay so the zooms right here and there it is so now what they're saying is it says on the same graph reflect the curve across the y-axis this graph is an example of a graph of a quadratic function well, if we're going to reflect all these points across the y-axis, and I start with point A, its reflection, if it's on the y-axis, it's going to be on the y-axis still. It's not going to move. So my reflection, A prime, would end up here. Now, if I reflect B across the y-axis, 
then it's going to end up at the point, instead of 1, 1, it's going to end up at the point negative 1, positive 1. Okay. Okay, so now I have these points. Now I want to reflect them. So if I click here and I do transformation or reflect about a line, I click there, it says select objects to reflect, then line of reflection. So if I choose this point and this point, it's not letting me choose. Let me just try this. Okay, I have to do one at a time. Okay, I get it now. So I'm going to draw a line. So if I draw a line from here to here, and then I choose to transform, so I'm going to pick the point A, and I'm going to transform A about this line. So now A prime, it landed right there. It did not move. B, transform across there. There is B prime. Okay? So it just took me a moment there. Okay, so then you choose the point and then reflect about this line that you can't see because it's right on the axis, y-axis. And then D, transform across here would end up here. Well, what's happening? It's 3, 9, ending up, and then the x becomes negative 3, and then still 9. So the y doesn't change, the x becomes negative. So I'm going to take E, reflect it across. Take E, reflect it across this line, and there is E prime. So there I have reflected. So it says on the same graph, reflect the curve across the y-axis. That is done now. And then it says this graph is an example of the graph of a quadratic function. Okay, well, with me looking at this, I know that this is an, a particular function, and it is going to be the function x squared, because 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. So I'm just going to say that this equation is um, x squared. So there's the line x. Now when I go to square that, squared, and hit return, and hide this, now it has graphed that. So if you did this manually on paper, which is what you probably should have done, plot the point 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, 4, 16. Its reflection is the x's that are negative with the same value for y. These are my primes on this side. Reflecting it across, this is called a parabola. It is a quadratic equations graph. Okay, so the graph is an example of a graph of a quadratic function. Okay, so the next question is, what are these points in between that this line is going through? What would this, for example, what would the point be right here? Um, if I put a point like right there, I'm not sure how to draw a point. Just, oh, here it is right there, a point. Okay, so how about right here? Put a point right there, G. Well, what does that represent? Well, it would be a side of side length, something between 3 and 4, and it squared would be something between 12 and 13. So 3 point something. So these are all values of the area. The, the Y would be your area. These are all the values of areas of squares whose side lengths are between integers. Okay, so that's what the con connecting the lines, the dots with a line does. Not a line, but a if I connect those dots with this function, this green parabola, all the points in between these points that we have plotted are points where the sides are not whole numbers, and neither is the square of those. Well, some of them would be, like right there. But anyway, these are side lengths that are not integers, resulting in what their area is. Okay? All right. Next page. And that is it. This is the end of Lesson 2. Go do your problem set.